Hey Optimancers, Chris here. In my last video I talked about the armor restrictions with the monk class and going feature by feature through the main monk class and every subclass, what we discover is that A, 90% of monk features work just fine when you're wearing armor. You basically give up faster movement using dexterity for weapon attacks, or unarmed strike using the martial arts die for damage, and making an unarmed strike as a bonus action when we take the attack action. Though, we can still spend a key and make two unarmed strikes using flurry of blows, and that works just fine. B. We discovered that no monk subclass feature from any subclass requires that you not wear armor. And C. We also discovered that a number of features, including stunning strike and focused aim, don't require you to use unarmed attack or even a monk weapon. So what I wondered was, what if we just made a strength-based monk? Then we get heavy armor proficiency and threw on heavy armor. Where would that leave us? I promised that in this video, I would explore that possibility in a build and see how it works out. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a link to my Patreon in the video description. Today I'd like to thank some top level patrons. Dewey Cheatham and Howe, DM Michael 7000, Douglas Reynolds, Drew Terry, Eric Harvey, Eric Wasserman, FBK05, Gishlife, Glenn Wilson, Gakamaru, Hendry, Horby, Ian Johnson, I'm Not K, Jay Gemmel, Jack Harper, James Mackla, James Sprague, James Thomas, Jason Klein, Jeff Williams, Chad Zand, John Matera, Jonathan Lexi, and Joseph Robido. Thank you all so much for your support. Let's get started. So my goal going in is simple enough. The build needs to be primarily monk, needs to be strength based, needs to wear heavy armor, and if I could either build it to do great damage or I could build it to do passable damage and still deliver halfway decent stunning strikes, then we're in better shape than a monk not wearing armor. Now I know right off the bat I'm not going to achieve great damage. I already played with the numbers on a ranged monk and passable damage was the best I could achieve. I'm hoping to get similar results with melee, but if we could add stunning strikes to that, then, you know, maybe we've got something. So the first challenge is getting heavy armor proficiency on this character. There's certainly the possibility of making, like, a mountain dwarf or something, then you could grab heavy armor proficiency at level 4, but then we're dealing with a 25-foot movement speed, and we're not progressing beyond getting heavy armor, as far as feats go, until level 8. That seems like a long time to pick up, you know, even Great Weapon Master. The other possibility is a class dip into Fighter or Cleric at level 1, get the armor proficiency, and switch to Monk at level 2. This seemed like the obvious play, but something that kind of got me from left field was this. So, the multi-class requirements of Monk require a 13 Dexterity and Wisdom. If I want to be good at stunning strikes, then I want more than a 13 wisdom. But I'll also want good constitution if I'm going into melee. But if I'm strength based, then strength still needs to be my primary ability score. So strength, dexterity, constitution, and wisdom. With very inhuman, it looks like this. 16 strength is fine. 14 constitution and wisdom, it's just really less than I was hoping for. If we went half elf instead, I could make one of them 16, but then I'm grabbing Great Weapon Master at 4 instead of at level 1. Well, here I can raise one of those scores to 16 at 4. So, by level 4, basically the same either way. And level 4 of Monk, level 5 total character level. Actually, if I went straight class Mountain Dwarf, it's actually worse in the long run. I could start with Strength 17, Constitution 17, Wisdom 15. Then, at level 4, I have to take the Heavily Armored feat, uh, and then... At level 8, I need to take Great Weapon Master, so all three of those scores are stuck at odd numbers until level 12 at the earliest. Uh, I'm still sitting on a plus 2 Wisdom modifier at that point, which is not very good. Also, I'd be looking at an abysmal armor class until level 4. In the end, the numbers probably look best with either a Half-Elf or a Human. Figure I might as well go Half-Elf then. At least then we get some other racial features. Ended up with the regular half-elf, we get the plus two additional skill proficiencies, we'll take perception and survival, we get dark vision, which I think we'll want, 
and we'll use the Tasher's option for switching ability score bonuses, so we end up with a plus 2 strength score and plus 1 to constitution and wisdom. If you want to look at the character sheet as it was completed, there is a link in the video description. So our ability scores at first level, I mean, it's just not ideal. 16 strength is fine. 16 wisdom is good. 14 constitution, that's just lower than I would want, especially considering we have a D8 hit points here and we're going into melee. Here's the thing, though. If stunning strikes are going to be part of what we do, I think we need that 16 wisdom. I mean, at least at some point. So we come across our first really major roadblock. This character is not going to be great defensively. 14 constitution, it's just not the score I was hoping for. But I think it's as good as we're going to get. So we're stuck with it. So we might as well move on. So our first level, we'll take a dip in fighter. And I did really consider War Cleric here as an alternative option, but we're going to be making unarmed strikes, and we don't get the martial arts die for those, so I figured we better get unarmed fighting. This is going to give us a base D6 on those unarmed strikes, which is actually better than a monk at level 5, and just as good as a monk until 11. The bonus action heal with second wind will come in handy, and I picked up athletics and insight as skill proficiencies. I should point out that one advantage we have here over standard monk is we won't be bad at grappling or shoving when we need to. Normally that's not an option for monks who stereotypically have 8 strength scores and those scores never go up. Most importantly, we're going to have the armor and weapon proficiencies we're looking for. Level 1, you can have chainmail, which gives you a 16 armor class, just as good as the standard non-armored monk. And obviously at some point, we're going to hope to upgrade to plate mail which will give us an 18. For a weapon, either a greatsword or a maul. Doesn't really matter, damage is the same, and they both qualify for Great Weapon Master. Now you could do Polar Master at 4, then you could get a Halberd or a Glaive, then Great Weapon Master at 8, but then we're not raising our ability scores until 12, and I figure we'll have quite a number of options for our bonus actions anyways. So pretty straightforward character at 1, we're basically a melee fighter, walk up, hit with your greatsword, and a bonus action heal. So let's go Monk, we'll start with three levels. This makes us a level four character overall. So the two features we won't be using are right here, martial arts and unarmored movement. So we need to ignore those. We're gonna have three key at this point and we'll have flurry of blows, patient defense and step of the wind. All are bonus action options. They all cost one key. Dedicated weapon is an optional class feature and we won't be using it because we're not bothering with Monk weapons at all. Speaking of which, let's look at key fueled attack. So if we spend a key point as part of our action on our turn, we can make a bonus action attack with a monk weapon or an unarmed strike. So we don't use monk weapons, so if we use this, it's always going to be an unarmed strike. Deflect missiles gives us a reaction. It's pretty circumstantial, but I would use it when it comes up. But we're not going to be able to afford the key point to throw the missile back. I'll be going over key. We have the standard problems here. Monks are just so low on key. So we'll take Way of Shadow as our monistic tradition. I really like this option for Armored Monk. I discussed why in my last video. Right now at level 3 we can cast some spells. We can cast Darkness, Dark Vision, Pass Without Trace, or Silence using two key points. And we get the Minor Illusion cantrip, which is actually a pretty good cantrip. Now casting any of these spells requires two of our three key. Though if we cast in combat, we would trigger our bonus action on Armed Strike. I can maybe see the value of a Silence spell in combat, Otherwise, I would imagine we'd be casting out of combat. And now here, at this level, it's rough. Baseline DPR is 8.25. Our standard attacks are giving us 6 damage. Let's say we use 3 key for flurry of blows. Average damage is 6.5 on a hit. Let's say we hit 55% of the time. Adds about 1.41 DPR. That's 7.41. So we're below baseline. And at this point, all we're doing is delivering damage. So yeah, this doesn't look good, but let's add a few levels. I know a lot of features come in in the next few levels. I hope it gets better. So at fourth level of Monk, we're going to get our first ability score increase. That needs to be Great Weapon Master. That gives us the minus five to hit plus 10 damage option, and it's going to give us some great sword bonus action attacks. Exactly how many is a bit of guesswork, but for my math, I'm going to assume one per four round combat. We're also going to get Quickened Healing, 
This is really expensive. I just don't think we're going to be able to afford to use this. Then we get slow fall, which unbelievably is not impacted by wearing heavy armor. Comes into play at fourth level and starts out with a 20 point reduction in falling damage by using our reaction, which honestly is going to cover you for most falls. By 14th level in Monk, you should be able to fall from any distance at all and expect to take either no damage or barely any damage. Keep in mind that slow fall uses your reaction, so if you deflect a missile and then you fall, well, then you would take full damage. Focused aim is going to be an important feature for us. So with that minus 5 to hit for plus 10 damage, that's going to turn a lot of potential hits into misses. But if we can turn some of them back into hits, well then that's huge. This also triggers a bonus action on Arm Strike. The only problem here is that our key could run out pretty quickly. We also have to spend the key before we know if it's going to turn our miss into a hit. Ideally, once you start fighting a creature, you can often figure out what its armor class is, and then you might know. So if you miss by one or two, you would know that Focused Aim, spending one key, would turn that miss into a hit. we got to hope we're going to get that at least a couple times. Extra attack at level 5 in Monk is, of course, huge. And then we get Stunning Strike at level 5 as well. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, this being part of what we do, I think is essential to making this character more than just a damage dealer. Otherwise, my expectations for damage would be much, much higher. Key Empowered Strikes at level 6 is important to make our unarmed strikes considered magical. Then Shadow Step at level 6, this one is fantastic for us. As a bonus action, we can do a teleport of up to 60 feet, and then we get advantage on our first attack afterwards, which combines well with the minus 5 to hit for plus 10 damage. Now the issue here is that Shadow Step requires dim light or darkness. So how often are we expecting dim light or darkness? I mean, we're not going to have it all the time. Maybe half the time? I mean, I don't know. It's going to be a guess. Uh, but for my math, I'm going to say half the time. But after working on some calculations, there's no question to me what the biggest challenge of this build is. And that is, we have six key points, and boy, they are not going to go very far. If we want to pass without trace or any of our shadow art spells other than minor illusion, that costs two key. If we want a stunning strike, that costs one. If we want to use focused aim, that costs at least one. And we haven't used flurry of blows, patient defense, step of the wind, throwing back the missile with the fleck missiles, or quickened healing. I think realistically we can't expect to do any of those things ever because they are going to require a resource we simply cannot afford. So I think the rule needs to be, we treat key like gold. Maybe one Shadow Arts spell per short rest, maybe two Stunning Strikes, and then maybe Focused Aim only when it costs one key, and we've discovered the armor class of the enemy, and we know it's going to turn our miss into a hit. That might be two times per short rest, and now we're out of key. So where does our DPR end up? Our baseline at level 7 is 16.5. Our base attack routine, so 20 points of damage times 30% chance to hit. That's 6 points of damage on average per hit, plus we add damage for criticals, and we end up with 6.35 because of extra attack. Our standard damage on a round is 12.7. Without Great Weapon Master, we only do 10 damage on a hit. We hit 55% of the time, and you can see we end up doing 11.7. So we are better off with Great Weapon Master than without it. But our chance to hit isn't very good. But using the minus 5 plus 10 option from Great Weapon Master does bring us slightly ahead of not using it. Okay, so bonus action attacks to Great Weapon Master. I said 1 per combat, so that's 6.35 average damage, divided by 4, that's 1.59. 2 stunning strikes and 2 focused aim, they both trigger key fueled attacks, so we get 4 of those per short rest. That's our unarmed strike, because we cannot use our non-monk weapon with that feature. An unarmed strike average damage at this point is 3.75, divided by 4, so we're adding another 0.94. And we said we're going to have two focused aim uses turn misses into hits. So that's 40, divided by 16, adds another 2.5. Now, as I said, we won't be able to use Shadow Step all the time, and I'm guessing half the time, at least for this math. So if we use Shadow Step and we're not making a bonus action attack, though we're not making a bonus action attack by my calculations half the time anyways. If we miss by one and we use focused aim, 
actually will give up the bonus action attack, but the focus aim will add more damage than we're giving up. So that's not a reduction to damage. So I think we can say that Shadow Step will give us one attack with advantage on half of our turns. So if we have advantage, we're going to use Great Weapon Master for that one attack. Obviously, that increases our chance to hit to 51%. That could be better. And when we can raise our strength score, it will be. So we have 20 damage times 51%, that's 10.2, plus crits, 10.9. So a Shadow Step Advantage Great Weapon Master attack does 4.55 more damage on average than our standard attacks. Honestly, I'd hope that would be a little bit higher, but it'd still be significant, I think. Okay, so half of our rounds and half of our attack action on those rounds. So that ends up being 4.55 divided by 2. And yeah, this is a little bit less than I thought it would be, but we're adding 2.28 DPR from the advantage gained through Shadow Steps. So we have 12.7 plus 1.59 from Great Weapon Master bonus action attacks, 0.94 from Key Fueled attacks, 2.5 from Focused Aim, and 2.28 from Shadow Step. That's 20.06 damage. And our baseline was 16.5. So you know what? That's 21% over. That's very comparable to what a ranged monk can do, except we're delivering stunning strikes, and we're doing a fair bit more than a melee monk that uses monk weapons. So maybe there's something to putting on this armor. Looks like we struggled at lower levels, but once we get to this level 7 period, it looks like we're doing okay again. But I have to say I'm a bit concerned about level 11, because the baseline at that point jumps to 27.15, so we need 7 more points of damage per round, in four levels, and I'm not sure where we're gonna get it. But you know what, let's see what happens. It's tempting at this point to add a couple more levels of fighter and then take battle master. That could give us up to four more misses turned into hits through precision attacks. But I gotta tell you that part of the reason I wanna go monk is so when I get to level 14, I'll get diamond soul, and you know, getting diamond soul at level 15 hurts a bit, getting diamond soul at level 17 hurts a lot. So I would rather see what happens if we stick with Monk. So level seven, we get evasion. That's half damage on a failed dexterity saving throw or no damage on a successful save. With our hit points, it'll be good to have. Then stillness of mind, as an action, we remove the charmed or frightened condition. I have some issues with this one. I've gone over that enough times on this channel. I'm not gonna go over it again now, but still, you know what? I'd rather have it than not have it. Level eight, we have an ability score bonus. Don't think we have a choice here. We have to go strength. Can't afford our chance to hit to slip any more than it has. Level 10, purity of body, gives us poison and disease immunity. Poison immunity is great. And that's it, we're level 11. Baseline DPR is 27.15, and I just don't know if we're gonna have enough here to match. So our base attack routine, uh, so we have base 21 damage now. So it ends up being 13.3, just from our base two attacks. Bonus action attacks to Great Weapon Master, still one per combat, so 6.65 divided by four is 1.66. Two stunning strikes and two focused aim triggers key fueled attacks four times per short rest, and they do a bit more damage, so it's 4.87 divided by four, or 1.22. We'll still have those two focused aim uses, turning misses into hits, so 42 now divided by 16 is 2.63. Then the Shadow Step Advantage attacks, so 21 times 51% end up with 11.41. So a uh, Shadow Step Advantage Great Weapon Master attack does 4.06 damage, more on average than a regular attack. 4.06 divided by 2, so that's another 2.03. So we got 13.3 plus 1.66 from Great Weapon Master bonus action attacks, plus 1.22 from Key Fueled attacks, plus 2.63 from Focus Aim, and 2.03 from Shadow Step. That is 20.84. But I haven't done anything with the additional key I've received. So we have four more key points per short rest. How do we spend them? Well, we need a lot more damage here. We need seven damage just to equal baseline. So I think we gotta look at focused aim. If we have four combats with four rounds each in between short rests, that means we have 16 turns. We attack twice on eight of those turns and three times on the other eight, depending on whether we're getting a bonus action attack or using Shadow Step. 
This is maybe a bit optimistic because we can't necessarily always assume we know whether we're going to have a bonus action attack before using Shadow Step. But you know what? It's in that range. So this is an approximation, but I would estimate 40 attacks per short rest. So how many of those 40 attacks are going to miss by one or two? Well, around four. That means we would have the potential in four cases to spend one key and turn a miss into a hit. I've already assumed that two of them were sure things and I've included them in our current calculations. I don't think you can reasonably assume all four we're going to know beforehand though, because that would require we would always know exactly which attacks missed by one or two, but if we don't know the enemy armor class at all times, then that's not going to be the case. However, if we spend two more key on focused aim when we thought it might turn a miss into a hit, I think we could probably expect one of those two opportunities to land, so that'd be one more hit, or 21 damage per short rest, or 1.31 DPR, so now we're up to 22.15, and we have two more key left, I mean, we're just not going to get five DPR from two key, so that leads me to think that we have to go back to fighter earlier. Maybe the four superiority dice and an action surge are going to be what we need. So leave Monk at 8, grab two more fighter levels, and that brings us to Monk 8, Fighter 3. So we're spending four key on focused aim, hoping to get about three misses turned into hits, but what if we add on four precision strikes? Each of them adds a D8. I think there'd be like the one case where we spent one key to add plus two and it didn't end up being enough. A precision strike on top of that surely would be enough. So then let's say two out of the other three turn misses into hits. That would be three additional hits per short rest, or 63 damage divided by 16. So that's an increase of DPR of 3.94. Then we have an action surge per short rest, 13.3 damage divided by 16, 0.83. So we end up with 22.15 plus 3.94 plus 0.83 equals 26.92 I mean, that is close to the baseline, but we are still under baseline. And that's only using two key on stunning strikes. If we wanted more stun attempts, then the damage goes down. And yeah, I have to say, this is not what I was hoping for. I was hoping maybe we could get 10 to 20% over baseline, and then maybe have half our key for stun attempts. But it just doesn't look like that's going to work out. At least after a level 11. Before level 11, I think this bill works or at least works okay. But, you know, level 11, then it kind of falls off a cliff. And this is, yeah, it's not much different than the standard monk. Uh, Your standard on our monk has big troubles at level 11, and this one does as well. And I look at level 17, and baseline damage is going to jump to 35.4. I don't see any way we're adding another 8 damage per round here. So, yeah, the unarmed monk... I think it was worth looking at, and I think I can say with confidence now that if you do want to play a strength-based monk, you can put on armor, and you'll basically have similar damage potential and features as a standard monk, but you'll move more slowly, though you'll probably do a little bit more damage around those higher single-digit levels. But the standard monk struggles, unless you're a mercy monk and lucky with condition immunities. And after punching numbers and struggling with the builds, I found this is roughly an equivalent option, so it just wasn't the solution I was hoping for. If you're not playing at an optimized table, I think you could use this and you'd be fine. But at an optimized table, I think we need more than two stunning strike attempts per short rest for this kind of damage. Never mind, we're talking level 12, and we still have a 14 constitution and D8 hit points on a melee character. So if you want to see what it looks like on a character sheet, I will have the link in the video description. I promised the results. These are the results. Now I should touch on what might seem like an elephant in the room here. So the Shadow Monk can cast Darkness. We took a level fighter. We took the unarmed fighting, fighting style, but we could have taken blind fighting as our fighting style. That would have allowed us to see through the magical darkness at least to 10 feet. Or we could find a way to fit the Eldritch Adept feed on our character and take Devil's Sight, which would allow us to see our entire darkness spell. Uh, we would also be able to use our Shadow Step within that magical darkness then. 
Furthermore, it would give us advantage on all our attacks, and it would give disadvantage on attacks against us. So why on earth would we not use that combination? Well, experience tells me that I should stop recommending that combination entirely. And I think I have actually a number of good reasons for that. So many that I don't want to stick it at the end of this video. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my next video talking about why I don't think you should make characters that combine darkness with devil sight or blind sight. Because I think there are significant problems that get glossed over with those kinds of characters. So that'll be my next video. But I'll tell you what, if there is another way you can think of that would turn this character to the point where you think they could achieve baseline numbers past level 11, I'd love to hear them because I couldn't come up with any. But that doesn't mean there aren't any. I just couldn't think of any. So please let me know in the comments down below if you can think of ways to make this character work that maybe I didn't try. Otherwise, until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody, and I will talk to you again soon.